All right, Common Core Algebra checkpoint three. I can't believe I'm doing this again because I just did this whole thing. It took about 15 minutes, but I forgot to plug in my microphone in the back of the computer. So let's do it again. Should be good at this now. All right, this checkpoint is on diamond problems and fractions, solving fractions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. And I gave you an extra four sets of fractions to work on just for your practice because I think that's going to be the harder part of this checkpoint besides these. These diamond problems, most kids are doing pretty well at these, at least what I see in homework. So we'll get through this first page pretty quickly. Uh, the rule here, take your left to your X and your Y and multiply them to get the top. And we will have, we'll have this rule right on there for you. So you don't have to worry about memorizing it at this point. And you add them to get the bottom two. So 6 times negative 8, negative 48. Keep in mind you will not have a calculator for this, so make sure you know your multiplication facts. And 6 plus negative 8 is negative 2. Here, negative 7 times something is positive 42. Or you can take 42 divided by negative 7 if you prefer to do it that way. Either way, you get negative 6. And when you add negative 6 and negative 7, we get negative 13. And then two things that multiply here. You have to think two things that multiply to give you 32, but add or subtract to give you negative 18. Now this, I, I just want to kind of point this problem out. This is the one that's really most important for our future factoring. The purposes of doing diamond problems is for helping us out in the future for you know big factoring problems. And this is the situation that's going to come up in those where you don't know these two numbers. So if you're not good at this, you can't really do this in your head real quickly, just simply write out the factors like in pairs, like 1 times 32. Always start with a 1. 2 times 16, then go to 3. That doesn't work, so go to 4. 4 and 8. 5 doesn't work, 6 doesn't work, so then 7 doesn't work, and you go, you're go. you back to 8. Once you hit the number you already have, you're done. So just write out those pairs, and then think, don't worry about the signs yet, just think what two numbers, add or subtract for, in this list, 18. So then it's got to be the 6 and the 2, or the 16 and the 2. So just put the 2 and the 16 in there, and now worry about the signs. These have to multiply to give me positive 32, looks good, but they have to add to give you negative 18. So they both must be negative in this particular case. All right, hopefully that went well for you. Now the mixed numbers. So I have these two, those two, and then another two sets. So I have two, four, six, eight problems for you to work on. So if you want to just try them right away, you think you already know how to do these, then go ahead. Um, otherwise, I'll walk you through the first four pretty slowly. And then the next four, I'll suggest that you pause at that point. With addition, we need common denominators, okay, addition and subtraction. I like to show these vertically, like 1 and 1 6 this way, 3 and 5 eighths. I would not suggest doing 6 times 1 plus 1, three times, 8 times 3 plus 5, and make them improper, just because the numbers get pretty big. I would just leave it as it is. And, and think of these fractions as separate from the whole numbers. It's like I'm going to have 4 right here and something else, and we'll deal with that when we get there. So let's just look at the, the 1 sixth and the 5 eighths, and the common denominator that I would use would be 20 fourths. Now you could use 48. You can always multiply them. You're just going to have to do a lot of reducing later, and if they're not reduced, uh, you're going to lose points. It probably won't pass. So here, in our pre-algebra class, we call this a giant 1. You don't have to show the giant one. If you just want to do this part in your head, that's fine. But the giant one just means, like, where do I go? Six times what gives me 24, and it's 4. Do the same thing on top, times 4. And make it a fraction, and that's like a giant one, because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I'm multiplying by a 1, so I'm not changing the value of the fraction, just how it looks. So then 1 times 4 is 4. And again, if you just do this in your head, if you're used to doing that, that's totally fine. And here I'd go times 3 times 3, so that would be a 15. Again, that's a giant one. It's called the giant one method. Or if you just want to think 8 times something is 24, oh, that's 3, 5 times 3 is 15, and just put it there. You don't have to show this this little one part here. And then at this point, simply add the, the numerators, get 19, 20 fourths. And then don't forget about this one and the 3. That's the only thing you have to worry about here. So that's 4 and 19, 20 fourths. Now that's your answer, because the 19, 20 fourths is reduced, and it's not improper. I just want to say, oh, by the way, what if it were... 25 20 fourths. You know, like what if it was like 4 and 25 20 fourths? What if the top number were, was bigger? Well, in this case, I would, I would simplify this part of it because we we're asking for a mixed number here. I'll simplify this to 1 and there's 1 left over, 1 and 1 24th, and then add the 4 to that. 
So then that answer would be 5 and 1 24th. Okay, if that were to, ha were to happen. There's a practice one later on that I think that does happen. All right. Multiplication. Different rules with multiplication. Uh, you, this one, you do, you got to get rid of these mixed fractions for multiplication for sure. Uh, there is a way you can do it. You can make it 1 plus 2 fifths. And we can use distributive property. But do you really want to do a distributive property like this? We've been practicing this in class. With fractions? I don't think so. So let's not deal with that. Let's just do 5 times 1 plus 2. With multiplication division, I would suggest doing this. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is 7. Keep the fifths times. 4 times 2 is 8. 8, to 8 plus 3 is 11. And then just simply multiply straight across. Now, if you notice, you can reduce anything. Like the 7 and the 5 you can reduce, or the 7 and the 4, or the 11 and the 5, or 11 and the 4. I would reduce ahead of time. You know, that's going to come up in the next problems later. But at this point, it's just 77, because nothing does reduce, over 20th. Now, since nothing reduced over here, this won't be able to, you won't be able to reduce this. Now, this will be done, except... It's improper, and we asked for a mixed number. So go ahead and say, well, 20 goes into 77 how many times? 20 goes into 84 times, so it's just short of that. So we'll say 3. And then what's left over from 60 up to 77? It would be 17. Keep the denominator. Put a box or circle your answer, please. All right, what's next? Division. Division is just like multiplication, except in the, in the way that we want to make these improper. So like 5 sixths, uh, I'm just going to show this one right here, 9 times 6 plus 2 is 56, 54 plus 2. The difference here, though, is that division is very important. Division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm going to say that again. Division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's why I'm going to change that to multiplication and then flip the second number. Only the second number. Leave the first one alone. Very important. And then at this point, we can multiply this out, 45 over some huge number. You're not going to have a calculator, so wouldn't it be nice to have a little trick to reduce ahead of time? And that's what I'm going to do. So this 9 and the 6, I'm going to divide by 3. You don't have to do this, but you're going to want to. The fractions are big. The 5 and the 56, it can't reduce. The 3 and the 56, it can't reduce. And the 5 and the 2. So everything's reduced. So when I multiply this out, I get my 15 over two sets of 56. What is that, 112? I won't have to reduce this anymore. So 15 over 112 is my answer. It's not improper, so you don't have to make it mixed. You can't make it mixed. Okay? So there's my answer. Get that out of the way. And let's look at... Let's look at G. All right, 2 and 2 ninths minus 2 thirds. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing this. Generally speaking, okay, maybe I'll put the minus there. The problem is every once in a while you'll run into a problem where you're going to have to borrow from this whole number. And I'm not going to show that method. It's just, it's like a whole other lesson. So I'm just going to do this kind of like when I'm doing subtraction, I'm just going to go with this times this plus this. I'm going to make them improper. With my additions, I don't. With my subtractions, I would. So I'm going to make this 18. 2 times 2 is 18 plus 2 is 20. So I'm going to make this fraction right here 20 ninths instead. So right away, 20 ninths. Then you can just do it like addition where you get the common denominator here. Okay, maybe I'll, I won't show the giant one. I'm just going to do this part in my head then. So I'm going to make this ninths because they both go into 9. I could make it 27, so the thing is I'm going to have to reduce more. So this is just times 1 times 1, so 20. This is times 3, so this is times 3. I'll just show that just because I'm used to showing that in my other classes. So then I'm just adding the 20 and the 6. Okay. And that's that's my answer, except it gets improper. I can't reduce it, but I do want mixed. So 9 goes into 26 twice. And with, what is it, 18? So 8 left over. I thought I did something different before, so let me double check my math here, make sure I didn't screw up somewhere. 18 20 ninths, two thirds, times three times three times one, subtract 14. Oh, I added them. That's my mistake. I do that in class all the time, don't I? I don't feel like making this video again, so I'm just going to make the correction right here, if you don't mind. 
another reason why you after if you have time afterwards you look for dumb mistakes like that. So I forgot to subtract. I added. So twenty minus six is fourteen. Nice. That looks better. And then nine goes into fourteen once with five left over. So one and five nines. And that makes more sense. If I'm taking a number that's smaller than two, I'm adding two thirds to it, I get up to about two and two nines. So hopefully I didn't screw that one up. Let me know if I did. All right. Now I have two more sets here. My suggestion for you is to pause it right now and go ahead and try, maybe try these two problems and then check your answers. And if, if you didn't get them right, then, then listen to my explanation and see where you, where you goofed up. And then go on to this one and do the same thing. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause. All right, hopefully you did it right if you paused it. If, if you're just still listening, still trying to learn, that's fine too. Three-fourths plus two and three-eighths. Again, because it's addition, I prefer to leave it mixed. You can make it improper. You can make it 19 eighths if you prefer. It still works. Okay. Eighths, eighths times two times two times one times one. I better double check this since I screwed up on that before. I'm adding. So six plus three is nine. Same denominator, eighths. This is nothing here, so it's just two. Like zero plus two is two. So my answer is two and nine eighths, which doesn't make any sense form wise. Okay, and this is kind of what I was explaining earlier on. It's 9 eighths. I need to convert that to 1 and 1 eighth. 8 goes into 9 once, big 1. If 1 left over, middle 1, over 8. I still have the 2. It's like saying 2 plus this. So 2 plus that is 3 and 1 eighth. Then you circle your answer or put a square around it. Hope that went well for you. Go ahead and try I and check your answer when you're finished. Here I'm going to make this improper. So 5 times 1 plus 2 is 7 fifths. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 3 is 15 fourths. Hope I don't forget to subtract later. 20 ths this is my common denominator. That's a pretty straightforward one. Times 5 times 5. Now maybe you don't know what 15 times 5 is. You might have to write that off on the side somewhere. But that's 75 times 4 times 4, 28. I'll see how quick this goes if you know your multiplication tables and how long it's going to take you if you don't. So keep practicing your just typical, you know, 4 times 7. Can you do that pretty quick? Or is it going to slow you down? And then here it's the subtraction. So if I do 28 minus the 75, you could do 75 minus 28 if this helps you. Doing it this way. And then just change the sign at the end. If these are turn out to be big numbers on the checkpoint and you don't have a calculator. Either way, you get negative 47. Okay, again, if you do it this way, maybe you're just used to doing this way and say... Uh, 7, I haven't done this way in a long time. And then that bar also, this is a 6, and that's 47. But since the other way, 75 is bigger, you're going to make it negative. I guess what I would do is just count up from 28 up to 75. 28, 38, 48, 58, 68, that's 40 so far. And then 7 more would be 47. So there's a distance of 47 in between there. Whatever works for you without a calculator. I have four, negative 47 over 20. And again, make it mixed. 20 goes into 47 twice, with 7 left over, and negative out front. I'm going to double check to make sure my answer makes sense. I'm basically doing 1 minus 3. I should get negative 2, right? So even without the fractions, I can see my answer about makes sense. I didn't get negative 4, or I didn't get positive 4, or something that wouldn't make sense. Um, what else? I guess that's it. Hope that went well. And those, these are usually the harder ones, the addition and subtraction. Most kids are comfortable with, with the multiplication and the division, so we'll see. So the division might be tricky, too. All right, go ahead and pause and try these quick, and come back and check your answer. So here I'm going to go 2 times 3 plus 1, so 7 halves. Multiply, just keep going left and right, so 5 fourteenths. You might have run into some trouble with some big numbers here. Well, I guess this isn't too bad. If you just multiply it straight out and you get 35 over 28, they're both divisible by 7, so divide this by 7, and you get 5. Divide this by 7, you get 4. Okay, and you're going to want to want to make this 1 and 1 and 1 fourth. I don't like writing left and right for my equals, but that's all right for this particular case. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing that. This is what I would prefer to do. I prefer, and, and you should get used to doing this, reduce ahead of time. And when you reduce ahead of time, please make sure this is all multiplication. No additions like 5 plus something or like if this is 5 plus x in a problem which is stuff we'll be doing later um, these two you can reduce 
but you couldn't reduce this. Like if this is a five right here, I couldn't reduce this five and that five because of that darn plus sign. So I just want to give you a small heads up. You're not going to run into this now, okay? But in the future you will. Just make sure it's all multiplication. If this is an addition, do not try to reduce. Don't reduce the seven and the fourteen right now. It does not make any sense. So since it is a multiplication, we can just reduce. So divide seven divided by seven, fourteen divided by seven. I can't reduce the five with anything, so now we can just multiply straight across. And I get my five fourths that way, which is one the one and one fourth that we got earlier. And K. So two times four plus one, nine halves. Times flip ten thirds. Okay, 90 over 6 is doable. You can reduce that, I think. But again, I strongly suggest reduce. The 2 and the 10, make it a 5 and a 1. The 9 and the 3, absolutely, make it a 3 and a 1. Now multiply straight across. 3 times 5 is 15. 1 times 1 is 1. Nothing, just, you can put 15 over 1, I guess. I just prefer the, the whole number, 15. All right, that was my second time through, maybe your first time through. Uh, I suggest, you know, studying this, do these same problems again if you need to. Uh, just make sure you know what you're doing going into the checkpoint. And if this is after the first time you took the checkpoint, didn't go well, let's say you want to retake it again and you just went through this, that's awesome that you're you're doing this. Uh, I really suggest you study these hard so you really know this before you even take it that second time. So if you just make a silly mistake, you get your four that second time and you're shooting for your five the third time. All right. Good luck.